Greetings and welcome to the latest edition of Political Empire. I'm your host, Kim Pearsall with the Press Enterprise and PE.com, and we are inching closer and closer to the election. Our uh, first headline is about those early voting opportunities, and then we're also going to talk about the congressional debate that occurred uh, last night in uh, Riverside between Mark DeCano and John Tavaloni. So first, early voting. Uh, anyone who is raring to get out there and uh, vote for their candidates for the November general election can start doing so via absentee mail-in ballots on October 9th. So keep an eye out for those uh, things appearing in the mail and then you can send those ballots in straight away. And now we're going to talk a little bit about the 41st Congressional District debate that occurred last night in Riverside between Mark DeCano and John Tavaloni. Uh, it was an interesting debate, the second one to occur. And uh, we've got Imran Gori here in studio. Imran, thanks so much for being here today. Good to be here. <laughs> you were there for both the presidential debate, which we watched uh, via uh, closed circuit television, television, whatever have you. I think it was a CNN one because it had the little charts for how people were uh, registering their opinion of the candidates. And then right after, we had the congressional debate between Mark DeCano and John Tavaloni. Um, curious, what was your uh, overall take on the evening? What was your lead since you were the, the individual covering it and then writing for it for today's paper? Well, uh, they did mirror some themes of the presidential debate with, with a lot of talk about taxes and how it will affect the middle class and uh, protecting Medicare. Uh, uh, with the congressional debate, though, it was, it was obvious that Mark Takano was certainly the more aggressive of the two candidates. Well, there he goes again, uh, talking about deregulation uh, and uh, Dodd Frank. And, uh, oh well, there it does go again uh, because talk, all this talk about making the free market work and the housing market uh, and all the deregulation uh, was what got us in the mess in the first place. Uh, it was interesting. We had both noticed and talked about the fact that he was using um, definitely Obama-esque lines. He was talking about doubling down on the trickle-down uh, theory when he was accusing John Tavaloni of of not uh, yeah being perhaps moderate enough. And uh, uh, Tavaloni himself was definitely trying to distance himself from his own party in some circumstances when a question was asked about how their uh, how they would go about getting other people on the other side of the party to agree with them or to negotiate because Congress has been at a standstill, um, he did emphasize that uh, they are, uh, both parties have disappointed him to some degree. And what did he have to say about the Tea Party and his relationship uh, with the Republican Party as, as far as that extreme? Well, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, he did use the line that both parties have failed us miserably. He, t he talked about the fight over the debt ceiling uh, last summer uh, where Republicans uh, and Democrats could not agree on a plan, uh, and but uh, you know he talked about areas where he would differ from the Republican leadership, such as uh, pro being pro-choice, uh, favoring immigration reform. But he also, um, you know, Mark DeCano has been trying to get uh, Tavaloni to uh, sign a pledge saying he won't, uh, you know, that he will protect Medicare. Tavaloni says he will protect Medicare, but he doesn't sign any pledges. He also said he's not going to sign the no-tax pledge that uh, Grover Norquist, the anti-tax advocate, has, has gotten most Republicans to sign. True. And then Tavaloni criticized Mark Ticano for not signing a pledge to join the Blue Dog Democrats, which are the, the more conservative Democrats in Congress as well. So it was kind of interesting during that debate. Refused to sign uh, any kind of pledge, but then also uh, wanted Ticano to sign his own pledge. Um, the 41st Congressional District. So tell us a little bit about that. It seems to be leaning a little bit Democrat. And then what area does it cover? Well, it includes Riverside, Marina Valley, uh, Paris, and Harupa Valley. Uh, it was newly created by uh, redistricting. Uh, it uh, leans slightly Democratic. Uh, Tavaloni did uh, have a greater percentage of votes in the primary, but there were a greater number of Republicans in the primary. And I think Democrats are counting on the... Uh, general election drawing more Democrats, and it did uh, go towards Obama in 2008. True. And then finally, a big emphasis of the evening. It started off with their first opening statements, and it was integrated in quite a few questions. Jobs, job creation, uh, the emphasis on our 12% unemployment rate, which granted has improved from about 2010 when it was 15%. But uh, what did you glean from their statements on how they were going to help create jobs in their district? Right. I think they both talked a lot about job training, uh, education, that sort of thing. Uh, and Lean, you know, Tavaloni, for, for his uh, part, talked about his record as a county supervisor, uh, while uh, Takano talked about his background in education. Uh, but uh, in terms of specific programs, I didn't hear, uh, 
you know, a whole lot of differences there. True. Well, uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, forthcoming when the November election rolls around and if they do have concrete examples for how to create jobs in that district. And uh, I wanted to thank Imran for joining us today. It was a late evening. It was a, a late uh, debate and then we had a post show afterwards until about 930. Uh, so thank you, Imran, for being here and thank you for watching yet another edition of Political Empire. We'll see you tomorrow.